I call to order the meeting of Pasadena Independent School District Board of Trustees in regular session on Tuesday, April 25th, 2023, in the boardroom of the administration building, 1515 Cherry Brook, Pasadena, Texas, 5.30 p.m. Board members present, Mrs. Nelda Sullivan, Mr. Casey Phelan, Mr. Kenny Fernandez, Ms. Paola Gonzalez Fuselier, Mr. Marshall Kendrick, and myself, Vicki Morgan. Board members absent, Ms. Crystal Davila. <clears throat> Let the record indicate that a quorum of board members is present, this meeting is duly called, and that notice of this meeting was posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Let the record indicate that Ms. Crystal Davila is now present. Invocation this evening will be given by uh, Mr. Fernandez. Okay. And Mr. Phelan, will you do the pledges? Sure. Okay, let us stand. Pledge the American flag. One minute, prayer first. Join in the prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and this time together, Lord. Thank you for uh, allowing the platform that you have given each and every one of us, Lord, to serve your purpose, serve your will, your way, Lord. Pray that this uh, board meeting is called uh, duly uh, with you involved, Lord, with you in mind, and with you in our hearts, Lord. Pray that you just watch over this, excuse me, this district. Uh, throughout this time, throughout the end of the school year, Lord, that um, uh, we got a final run, Lord, and that you just uh, watch out for each and every one of our students, our staff, our parents, and any community members that are involved in any of the activities that we have, Lord. Pray that you just watch over this meeting tonight. Um, Lord, pray that you just um, are with us and keep us safe, Lord. Strengthen us. Allow us to glorify your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state under God, indivisible. Now, Mr. Where's Mr. Joe Horton? He's going to sing. <laughs> yeah. When we need him. Well, Jeremy, you're up. When we need him. That's just wrong. Maybe bandits. He's only fair. I'll tell you what, man, he would be a tough act to follow. No, that's for sure. I wouldn't want to follow him up for anything. I think you're good. The board team. is going to adjourn to closed session for Texas Government Code sections 551.074 for the purpose of con considering. The appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, or to hear complaints of charges against a public officer or employee, unless the individual who is the subject to the deliberation or hearing requests a public hearing concerning matters related to the superintendent's recommendation to hire administrative personnel and or the superintendent's recommendations related to renewals, non-renewals, and terminations of contracts for professional personnel. 551.071 and 551.074 for the purpose of considering the evaluation of the superintendent and any amendments to the superintendent's contract and related actions. 551.071 to consult with the district's attorneys according matter, concerning matters on which the attorney's duty of the district under the Code of Professional Responsibility clearly conflicts with the Texas Open Meetings Act. To seek the advice of its attorney about pending or contemplated litigation or a settlement offer and or consider legal advice regarding items specifically listed on the agenda. 551.072 for the purpose of discussing the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. We'll reconvene an open session as close to 7 p.m. as we can get back in here. Convene an open section, open session at 7.11 p.m. Once again, I welcome you and uh, 
Maybe a little warm in here. We're not used to having this full of a house, but we welcome each one of you to the regular board meeting. And at this time, we have special recognition. We do, Madam President. We are excited to recognize, recognize this year's Vanguard Community Service Award recipients. The Vanguard Award was created years ago to honor high school seniors who have dedicated hours of volunteer work to serve the Pasadena area. Whether that involved volunteering time, their actions, or their talents, these students made a huge positive impact on this community, and we are so very thankful for their outstanding volunteer service. We'd like to share a short video with all of you created by our communications team that was inspired by these community heroes and encompasses the ethos behind the Vanguard Community Service Awards. What does it mean to be a hero? You don't need a card. Or the ability to fly. Super strength, x-ray vision, or bow and arrow position. The qualities that describe a hero are the ones that cannot be seen. It's the desire to serve, to be available. And help build a stronger community. To champion a cause. And fight to make a difference for those in need. A true hero steps up. And takes action. When no one else will. Anyone can be a hero. You too can be a hero. Together, we can all make a positive impact on our community, and maybe even the world. We, 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 are marbles in the community. So Lots now, of these young, and young men and women are our future. And we're proud, proud, proud to be able to recognize them this evening. I'm going to turn the microphone over to Angie Watkins, one of our counselors, who will present the 2023 Vanguard students from their respective high schools. And Angie is from J. Frank Doby High School. So we'll get started. Thank you. I'm so honored to present this year's Vanguard students from Doby High School. I'm going to start with Yael Azara. Yael has volunteered at Our Lady of Guadalupe Church, the Royal Senesta Houston, Vista Nursing and Rehabilitation, and the McDonald's Texas Invitational at Doby High School. Yael plans to attend the University of Houston Clear Lake and become a computer engineer. Next up is Kennedy Baines. Kennedy has made an impact in the community through her volunteer work at University of Houston Downtown, St. John's United Methodist Church, and One Movement Church, as well as multiple Pasadena ISD schools. Her future goals are to attend college and earn a PhD in psychology and business. Next, we have Dylan Campos. Dylan has dedicated his time to volunteering at the Melillo and Frazier Chess Club throughout his high school career. He has devotedly trained children in chess, creating multiple champions and earning many awards for the schools he serves. His future goal is to earn a PhD in psychology from the University of Houston Honors College so that he can contribute to society as a clinical psychologist. Next, we have Sandy Hernandez. Sandy has volunteered in the medical field for the Acadian Ambulance Com Company and Memorial Hermann Hospital Southeast. Post high school, she plans to continue working in a medical assistant role while pursuing her associates in applied science at San Jacinto to become a nurse. Next, we have Isabella Lara. Isabella has volunteered in numerous events over the years, such as Be the Match, fundraisers for Uvalde and victims of gun violence, and helped with the Armand Bayou cleanup through Key Club. Isabella has also put her coaching skills to use, training Little League cheer, drill teams, and competitive cheer teams in the community. Isabella plans to major in political science at the University of Houston, and she aspires to earn a graduate degree in law. Oh, 
last but not least, we have Destiny Ramirez. Destiny has volunteered at the Houston Zoo as a camp counselor at BHI as an assistant cheer coach and random acts of kindness. Her sights are set on Texas State University in San Marcos, where she plans to pursue a major in biology with a minor in early education. Congratulations. Now I'd like to turn the mic over to Christy White, who will present the students from Lewis CTHS. Thank you. I'm delighted to present the Vanguard students from CTHS. Alexis Benestante. Alexis has dedicated her time to volunteering with multiple organizations, including the Houston Food Bank, her local church, NHS, Criminal Justice Club, and as a student election worker. She plans to obtain a bachelor's in economics and continue on to law school for a GD after law school. She aspires to go into the corporate and constitutional law. Jacqueline Fuentes. Jacqueline has volunteered with multiple locations in Pasadena, such as the Teen Court, Garfield Elementary, Brighter Bites at VW Miller Intermediate, and CTHS, as well as Pinebrook Community Park. Her future aspirations are to become a general family physician, while she will, she will have the opportunity to help those in need. Charles Garrett. Charles has volunteered for Pasadena's Taste of the Town, Pinebrook Park, CTHS Teen Court as a jury member, and he has also interviewed eighth graders for the business pathway at CTHS. Following high school, he plans to attend Texas A&M University at Corpus Christi and study healthcare administration. His goal is to become a, de a department manager in either a pediatric unit or as a manager of an entire hospital. Bryce McCarley. Bryce has dedicated his time volunteering for organizations such as the Houston Zoo, Bayport Animal Hospital, Pasadena Animal Shelter, and with the FFA. Led by his passion for nature, he plans to continue his education and pursue a career in animal science or wildlife conservation. Thank you to the CTHS Vanguard students. And now I'll turn the microphone over to Lauren Baugh with Pasadena High School. This year's Pasadena High School Vanguard students are Ashley Colazzo. Ashley has been dedicated to her community, donating her time to the communities and school organization and at Pasadena High School. She is determined to make a career out of real estate and will do so by getting her license after high school. Next is Gris Angeles Espinoza. Gris Angeles has served with communities and schools at multiple schools in Pasadena ISD, Houston Food Bank, and the Texas Youth Summit Conference. Her future plans after high school include going to college and exploring a career in either criminal justice or surgical technician. Next, we have Maria Lara. Maria has volunteered at Armand Bayou Nature Center, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, Pasadena Convention Center, Houston Food Bank, San Juan Diego Catholic Church, and multiple Pasadena ISD schools. After high school, she plans to continue her education and receive a degree in biology to become a pediatrician and able to help kids in need. Next, we have Emily Lopez. Emily is an active volunteer who has served with the Pasadena LSR, Walk for Sight, Women and Kingdom Ministry, Galena Park Library, Agape Love, Bridge Havens Children Advocacy Center, Eastgate Church, Townley Place Center, Jesus Feed My Sheep Ministry, 
state and community and organizations within Pasadena High School. She plans to continue her education and obtain a bachelor's degree in business and start a nonprofit organization that would assist with the homeless population. Next, we have Jonathan Rodriguez. Jonathan served his community through food bank distribution at his local church and within the communities and schools organization. He plans to go to college and major in music or computer science. Congratulations to all of the Pasadena High School Vanguard students. Now I'll ask Erica Carroll to present her Vanguard kids. I'm excited to present the Vanguard students from Pasadena Memorial High School. Angel Arroyo. Angel was a volunteer for the Houston Food Bank, Hitmen Boys Baseball, Pasadena Memorial High School, and St. Pius Catholic Church. After high school, he plans on attending college to receive a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. Joseph Luna. Joseph have, has volunteered in a variety of initiatives, including the Pasadena ISD Gifted and Talented Summer Camp, PMHS's musicals Legally Blonde and Willy Wonka, multiple homeless shelters, churches, and Pasadena ISD schools. After high school, Joseph will pursue a degree in chemistry and one day hopes to start his own business. Devin Manganero. Devin has been an active volunteer in youth sports by dedicating his time to baffle Pearland Patriots, basketball warriors, and the Braves baseball team. After high school, he plans to attend San Jacinto College and complete his basics before transferring to a university. <laughs> Joe Mendez. Joe dedicated his time and talents as volunteer coach assistant, making a positive impact on many kids' lives in the area. After high school, he plans on attending college and receive a, a degree as an engineering technician. Adrita Rahman. Adrita is an active volunteer with the South Down Trace Neighborhood, Pasadena Animal Shelter, Vista Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, Heritage House Assisted Living, and multiple churches in the area. She plans on attending New York University to pursue a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, Government, and Postgraduate Degree in Local Government Affairs. Congratulations to this year's PMHS Vanguard students. And now I would like to turn over the microphone to Joshua Castro. Good evening. At this time, I would like to present the Sam Rayburn Vanguard, Vanguard Award recipients, Yamilex Garza. Yamilex donated her time to volunteering at the Deer Park Community Center, working with the youth in her community. As she looks ahead to her future, she has set her sights on obtaining a real estate license or loan officer license, two credentials that will enable her to help families purchase their dream homes. <laughs> Nadia Pettis. Nadia volunteered at NASA Space Center, Vern Cox Community Center, Shriners Burn Unit, Pasadena ISD's Walk for Sight, and Sam Rayburn's High School's Texas Battalion. She hopes to attend Sam Houston State University and join programs or groups that help her better serve the community around her. <coughs> C. 
Sarah Rangel Rangel. Sarah devoted her time volunteering at Sarah's House, Grace Church, and Sam Rayburn High School. After high school, she plans to study neuroscience or biology in college to one day become a physical therapist or a neuroscientist, both of which she can use to help those with developmental disorders. <laughs> Jalissa Reyes. Jalissa has been a devoted volunteer dedicating her skills and time to the Houston Food Bank, Sarah's House, and the Reserve at Pasadena. With ambitions even greater than her current work, she is determined to become a traveling RN while also pursuing a side passion of writing books. <laughs> Estefany Ruiz. Estefany de dedicated her time volunteering at the San Jacinto Monument, Pasadena Fire Department, Big Love, and the Pasadena ISD Athletic Hall of Fame, and numerous Pasadena ISD schools. After high school, she will attend San Jacinto Community College to kickstart her studies as she is interested in entering the medical field by becoming an EMT as a first career step to where she can gain knowledge and figure out what direction to take for the rest of her professional life. Thank you to all of our Texan Vanguard students. We are so proud of you. I would now like to ask Michelle Malvo to come to the microphone. I am proud to recognize this year's South Houston High School Vanguard recipients. Joseph Ferguson. Joseph is dedicated to his community. Throughout his high school career, he has served as a volunteer firefighter in the city of South Houston, helped at the South Houston Baseball League and the South Houston Fire Department. After high school, he plans to attend EMT and fire school. Jennifer Avendano. Jennifer has volunteered at Cornonia Houston Church, giving back to her community. She is committed to furthering her education at San Jacinto College and entering the nursing program. Victor Lopez Morales. Victor spent his high school career as a volunteer firefighter at the Westfield Volunteer Fire Department. After high school, he plans to pursue either college education or enlist in the military. <laughs> Catherine Rodriguez. Catherine has served the Houston Public Library and many Pasadena ISD schools by volunteering in their community events. Her future plans are to attend the University of Houston Clear Lake and pursue a degree in education to become a second grade teacher. Ingrid Sanchez. Ingrid has volunteered at South Houston Branch Library, Pasadena Public Library, ECHS, the Hancock Elementary Summer Library, and the South Houston High School Choir. She plans to attend the University of Houston Clear Lake for a computer science degree and enter the tech space. Thank you to our South Houston High School Vanguard students and to all this year's Vanguard recipients for your contributions to the community. All right, well that was exciting. We want to thank our community sponsors who helped with this event, Premier Worldwide Investigations, Waterburger, Chevron Pasadena Refinery, and Chick-fil-A for uh, recognizing the importance of our students who give back so much. They have goodies in their gift bags from these vendors, so thank you for your support. And then parents, we want to recognize you. So parents of Vanguard students, please stand up and be recognized for supporting them.
We know their accomplishments would not be possible without your support and probably taking them back and forth to their volunteer opportunities. Um, but at this time, we do have a full house, so we're going to give you just a minute to go out and enjoy your students and take pictures. Uh, so we'll pause to let you transition out to the lobby, and then we're going to bring others in for a separate recognition. So we'll take just a minute for that. Thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Seats up front, seats on the second row. Let's just start filling them in. Do we want to? Good night. Boy, it's great to see him come. I'll tell you. Unbelievable. We've got about seven seats on the front row, two over here. Two up front. I don't think so. There's no room in the end. There's no room in the end. <laughs> All right. I think we're, are we out of seats? I think you are. We better this, hurry and start before we get shut down by the fire department. This is uh, get to know your new PISD neighbor. <laughs> So board members and other distinguished guests, while they're working out seating, I just want to say that we are super excited tonight to recognize our Read to the Final Four winners. We were celebrating Cruz Elementary in a big way recently because they just blew it away. They were second in the greater Houston area from October to March. Students logged their reading minutes to compete with all the third graders across the greater Houston metroplex area. And I'm excited to recognize that they were remarkable in placing second overall. So let's give it to Lindsay and she's going to talk more about that. Thank you, Dr. 
Dr. Pyle and board members. Read to the Final Four is a partnership between the NCAA, the Houston Local Organizing Committee, and school districts to help promote and inspire reading growth in third grade students. This year, 11 school districts, 391 schools, and over 39,000 students partic participated in the program. Those numbers include every third grader from our Pasadena ISD district across all 36 campuses. That is truly amazing. Our very own Cruise Comets logged over 2.4 million minutes of reading. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. 2.4 million minutes of reading during the competition and earned second place. Such a fantastic achievement. Their second place finish reflects the hard work and dedication of the students, teachers, and community. It is inspiring to see such young students engaging with reading and enjoying literature. Congratulations, Cruz Elementary, and may your success in the Read to the Final Four program continue to cultivate a love for reading on your campus and in your community. Let's give them a big round of applause. I have to say one word. One night I went up when the kids were reading in the dark in the library, and I had two of the students read to me. Usually I go and read to kids. And uh, Miss Jobs, uh, Miss. Uh, <sighs> Buckner <laughs> said, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to let the kids read to you. Oh, it was a thrill. You need to be really proud of these kiddos. Well, we're excited to announce some more good news, board members. We have three more schools that have been awarded the distinction of model PLC schools, and that's no small feat. I'm going to acknowledge Dr. Marsha Jones, who we all know is retiring, who's done the lion's share of the work in that area, and then Dan Hoppy, that's been her partner in crime, I guess you would say, for PLCs, and he'll take the reins. But they are doing a fantastic job in keeping that momentum going and keeping our PLCs just getting stronger and stronger. So y'all make the difference, but you have a great <coughs> partnership with Solution Tree. So please introduce your special guest, and let's get started celebrating. Thank you so much, Dr. Powell and board members. We are so excited to continue the celebration tonight by recognizing three additional schools into the National Model PLC Schools. These schools go through a rigorous application process and write the story of the work that they're doing to support students in a collaborative environment. And they must show data-driven evidence that the work they are doing does indeed improve student performance for a minimum of three years. Tonight we are honoring three schools. Cruz Elementary as a National Promising Practice School and Pomeroy Elementary and Southmore Intermediate as National Model PLC Schools. These schools have done an outstanding job creating professional learning communities that exemplify a focus on student learning a results orientation and have created collaborative teams that focus on what students need to be successful academically and have created a positive and thriving school culture. So we're honored we're we're honored to partner with Solution Tree and it's my honor to welcome a guest uh, Darren Grissom the executive director of Solution Tree here in our state is here to present these awards to our wonderful uh, three schools for this honor and again we're so grateful for the partnership that and all that uh, Solution Tree has done for us and Darren as well so Darren
Thanks, Mr. Hoppe. Dr. Powell, trustees, good to be with you again. And it's quite a night to be here in Pasadena on a night of so many recognitions. Obviously, good things are happening here. Um, by leveraging highly effective collaborative teams with a continued focus on intervention and rigor, um, the three campuses um, uh, that we mentioned, Cruz Elementary, Pomeroy Elementary, and Southmore Intermediate, are creating positive outcomes for Pasadena ISD students. These campus honors are further confirmation that the future is bright here in Pasadena and that you all together as a community have empowered educators to be the best they can be for your students. The first campus we are recognizing tonight is a Promising Practices campus and that's Cruz Elementary. The Promising Practices designation is brand new for us this year in 2023 and we are excited to be able to honor these schools. Make no mistake, these promising practice schools still must demonstrate clear evidence of improved student learning only over a shorter period of time, so we look forward to seeing, seeing continued growth and being back here again to welcome them as a model school. Congratulations to Principal Buckner and the entire Cruz Comets family. That's two in a row for Cruz, so we're going to move on to another campus. <laughs> Our next campus to receive uh, the PLC Model School designation is Pomeroy Elementary School. Model PLC campuses must demonstrate at least three years of consecutive student growth, and Principal Harding and his team have been focused on building an all-means-all culture over the past several years. Their success is evident in the multi-year growth of their students. Congrats to Pomeroy Elementary. Just to add, they're our first elementary model PLC campus. And our final campus uh, this evening to receive the PLC Model School designation is Southmore Intermediate School. True collaboration has been at the heart of Southmore's rise to a model PLC campus. Beginning with the Southmore stakeholders, then on to their collaborative teams, every process and structure has been established in an intentional way to support student success. In fact, Principal Moody included in their application a listing of the campus's core values, and it included Achieving success and educational excellence is, an, is a non-negotiable at Southmore Intermediate. Join me in congratulating Southmore Intermediate. And if I may, a, a quick parting moment of thanks to everyone in Pasadena ISD, particularly with your entire community gathered here this evening. Uh, you all have been trailblazers for ensuring success of, of every student, regardless of their background or resources. And that work has not only been to the benefit of the families here in Pasadena, but to thousands of others around Texas. And I think this is really important. Your district has been sh a shining example to others, and your administration has welcomed visitors from other districts from all over, seeking to learn how you are leading this work. We thank you for your partnership and appreciate all that you're doing to help us transform education worldwide to ensure learning for all. Thank you.
We have one more recognition tonight, the USDA Turn Up the Beat Award. Now, let me say that again. Turn Up, T-U-R-N-I-P, the beat, B-E-E-T. How cute is that? So this is the second year we've been awarded this for going the extra mile in 2022 to provide nutritious and appealing summer meals. This is also the second year for the Turn Up the Beat Challenge. Pasadena ISD was one of 26 winners in the whole entire state and among only 98 winners nationwide. So it recognizes outstanding can't talk tonight, outstanding summer meal programs across the nation who work hard to offer high quality meals to children that are appetizing, appealing, and nutritious during the summer months. High quality summer meals provide daily energy. I know our parents love that since they're taking care of them. And they help make sure children are healthy and ready to learn when they do return to school in the fall. So to earn this recognition, districts must serve local foods with a variety of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy products. So come on down, Mary Harriman and Jody DeFresno, for their hard work in representing PISD. And that is all of our special recognition this evening. We have lots more, but that's all we chose to share tonight. Then it's time to move on to public comments according to policy BED local related to items on the open session portion of the agenda and there are no public comments this evening. So we'll move to the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Eyes have it, motion carries. Moving to the personnel section. <clears throat> Madam President, I move that we approve agenda item A through O. Second. <laughs> wow. Exactly. <laughs> motion by Mr. Phelan, seconded by Mr. Fernandez, that we approve agenda items A through O. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. And now Mr. Phelan has the honor of introducing A through O. <laughs> it's a marathon. It's not a race. Okay? So here we go. Miss Guadalupe Hernandez. Where you at? <laughs> You've just been approved for the support counselor position. You have friends and family? Yes. Congratulations. Miss <laughs> Andrea Rojas. There you are. There she is. Hello. You too have been uh, we've your name the support counselor for school based mental health and everything. So here we go. Friends and family? Yes, sir. I'm blessed to be accompanied by my mom. I just want to touch my brother here because of my dad's health. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. What school was that? That was Bondi Intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you did that. <laughs> Miss, Miss Andrea Flores. Adriana. Adriana Flores, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Adriana Flores. Is she out in the, in the lobby? She's here, Mr. Bates. She's here. I think there's some movement coming. Somebody Maybe she's name out in the hall. <coughs> Give it a minute. I, I got you. We'll wait. <laughs> They're going to go find her. Yeah. <laughs> Adriana Flora. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Dr. Hickman. <laughs> She'll find her. <laughs> She's in the last 
There she Yay. is. <laughs> Ms. Flores, you too have been approved for the position of, of support counselor and you will be at Tegler. Do you have some friends and family you'd like to introduce? Yes, I have my husband, Adolf, my daughter. And I will. Awesome. awesome. It's awesome. She'll share jobs with Tegler and CTHS, so you, you've got a full caseload, so okay. Yeah. Thank you. Steve Welcome. wanted to make sure he had his counselor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> Miss Anna Garcia. There you are. Hello. First Ms. Anna Garcia also has been approved for the support counselor position at South Belt Elementary. Woohoo! <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Excellent. And I'm very excited. Congratulations. Congratulations. Miss Mara Garza. Woo! There she is. There she is. You have also been approved for a support counselor position at Southmore Intermediate. Friends and family? That's, where are they? Where's your friends family? They're a little bit all over the that's, that's fine. <laughs> I have um, Ilsa, Basil, my, my husband's parents, awesome. my little brother, Rental, my mom, Maria, that's my husband's back here. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Miss Cynthia Abara Silva. Uh, Hello. Miss <laughs> Abara has also been approved for a support counseling position at Teague Elementary. <laughs> There's Teague Elementary. <laughs> Friends and family? Yes, I have our wonderful husband here to support me. Congratulations. Congratulations. Miss Aisha Alvarez Hernandez. Did I say that correctly? I hope I did. There you are. That, that, you, you've been approved for the council position at Atkins Elementary. Congratulations. <laughs> family and friends? Yes. Uh, my mom, my dad, my boyfriend, uh, my Smith family. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Miss Norma Sierra. <laughs> Hello. I am here with my husband, my children, my family, children, and friends and family. My, actually, my work family. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Ms. Wilson is the new assistant principal at Marshall Kendrick Middle School. Congratulations. <laughs> Family and friends? Yes, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Perlita Garza. <laughs> you are now the payroll coordinator. Would you have friends and family you'd like to introduce? Yes, I have my husband, my mother, <laughs> my sisters, <gasps> my son, and my daughter. That's all right. <laughs> Congratulations. You deserve it. Not done. Go ahead. My favorite team. Excellent. Everybody likes the lady that pays them. Everyone wants their paycheck. That's right. Everybody wants their paycheck. You've heard the, you've heard the mic. That's You're the best very one. popular until they don't get it. Or that one penny that was wrong. <laughs> Miss Jennifer Guerrero. Hello, Miss Jennifer. Jennifer is our Director of Compliance Monitoring. Congratulations. And you get to, go ahead. My husband, Mike, 25 years, my, one of my daughters, Grace, the other one's FaceTiming. So oh. <laughs> awesome. And my family and my new client family, and I have so 
many friends across the district that would help me. Congratulations. Awesome. Yes, Miss Solmaria Benavides. Solmaria, there you are. <laughs> Solmaria, you are the new principal of Teague Elementary. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. I hear my mom. I hear my mom. <laughs> Congratulations. Miss <laughs> Jennifer Salceda. She's Malello's new principal, in case you can't figure it out. Good job. Congratulations. Context clues. Context clues. <laughs> Miss Sharon Williams. You are the new principal of May Smith. Congratulations. Happy birthday! <laughs> All right, last and definitely not least, Mr. Travis Regner. <clears throat> you are the new principal of San Jacinto Intermediate. Oh, <laughs> I do want to thank you guys the board. You know, for this uh, opportunity, but then also the support that you give us on a daily basis to attack our passion as, as best we know how. Um, Alita, Miss, and Dr. Fowling, the support that you give and the confidence you still have. It does not go on to guys. I do have my wife, Ashley, my kids, Morgan and Noah, and my parents, John and Jane, from our rocks, and my BHI family, who I think <laughs> Canyons to probably the closest friends I have, and then we're moving into St. Jack. I think we're moving. Yeah. It's a meaningful moment for me because uh, not only the recognition and the naming, but I'm going back. It was uh, the first school I was at uh, Pas uh, Pasadena 14 years ago. So after being away for the last 18 years, it's uh, it's surreal to know that I'm going to get to go back and be a part of that. So, Congratulations. I, I wouldn't be doing you justice, Travis, if I didn't tell you that I won't be bringing you lunch at the drop of a hat. Like, I, I have the current principal, so don't even think about that. <laughs> so. Okay, at this point in time, I know many of you have been here with family, with friends, to find out who your new working mates are going to be, or bosses. <laughs> if you would like to leave the meeting at this point in time, you're certainly welcome to do so. If you'd like to stay, we'd love to have you. So that's entirely up to you.
actually look at Troy because like it's the best we could do. It's gonna be cold. I just thought I'd ask. What? More air. Oh yeah, I know. We're doing the best we can. Okay. I had to ask. It's a little warm. That's wonderful. It'll cool off real quick. Yeah. I think it will. Okay. <laughs> You're up next. Yeah, you're under a fan. It just sat down. It's one, two, five rows back. I see who you're talking about. What is it? Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's a nice. I think she's a nice. She's probably younger than me. Oh. She's redheaded. It's a thing. On the right. On the right side. Oh, she's with Becky. Is that Becky Bennett? Oh, yeah, that is Stacy. Uh, I, I'll think of it in a minute. All right. Okay, let's resume. And next on the agenda, Mr. Phelan, is consideration and possible approval of the superintendent's summative evaluation. Madam President, I move that the board approve the superintendent's summative evaluation and discussed in, as, it, as discussed in executive session. Second. Motion by Mr. Phelan, seconded by Mr. Kendrick. Kendrick. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. I had to vote aye because it was, she's awesome. <laughs> you. Next up, so the motion carries. Consideration and possible approval of amendment to superintendent's contract and related actions. So moved. Second. I, I have to make yeah, the yeah. If you would read it, please. <laughs> Madam President, I move that the board approve the amendments to the superintendent's contract and related actions as discussed in the executive session. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Phelan, seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration and possible approval of networking department reorganization for a cost savings of $35,000. So move. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez, second, and by Mr. Phelan. <coughs> Any discussion? So board members, as you know, several districts, even in our area, have been under ransomware or cyber attacks. And so we took some current positions that were very helpful to us during the COVID times and the one-to-one -one rolling out all the devices. And we have uh, are asking for this to be a focus of those positions. And it's a savings on a cybersecurity position. So we're hoping that you'll accept that because that's the direction we need to go as a district to protect ourselves. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Certified personnel, and this uh, is for information only. Support personnel for 2022-2023 for information only. So we'll move to the educational section. First is T-Class Grant Student Teacher Resident Spotlight. Presentation by Marty Moffitt.
good evening, Dr. Powell and our amazing Pasadena ISD Board of Trustees. I am honored tonight to uh, do a spotlight of our amazing resident student teacher program for you. We applied for a grant from TEA for 60 student, uh, total of student teachers, excuse me, let me do that one more time, I apologize. <laughs> we applied for a grant from TEA for 60 total student teacher residents in a three year period. We are ending the second period of the three years. We have had an excellent positive response from our resident student teachers, our students, and our principals of our schools. Year one started January 3rd, 2021 to December 17th, 2021. We had 13 total uh, student residents that were approved. We did three uh, feeder patterns. We did three patterns. One, our first one was South Houston High School, and we had Jessup Elementary with Ryan Provone that participated, uh, Snyder Middle School with Kristen Still, uh, Queens Intermediate with Cleveland Lee, and South Houston High School with Andrea Winky, Patrick McCoy as the assistant principal. Year two is from August 8th, 2022 to May 26th, 2023. And we had 24 student teacher residents approved. And the feeder pattern was Pasadena High School. And we had Cruz Elementary with Sandra Buckner, Days of Ala Middle School with Melissa Garza, Jackson Intermediate with Jennifer Stewart, and Pasadena High School with Laura Gomez and Patricia Goodman. And that's going on, this, this is going on right now till the end of the year. And year three, next year, August 7th from 2023 to May 24th of 2024, uh, the feeder pattern is for San Rayburn High School. They're gonna, we're going to have a total of 23 student residents. And May Smith uh, is going to be one of the schools with Denise Moody. Uh, Pomeroy Elementary with Stephen Hardin and Bobby Shaw Middle with Bob uh, Darby Hickman, Sophomore Intermediate with Derek Moody and San Rayburn with Vanessa Reyes and as principal and Angela Garza. So the first question you guys probably wanted to know is who who really are our student residents? Our student residents come from University of Houston in two pathways. One is the main educational pathway, and the other is through a program called Teach Houston that produces STEM certified teachers. That's uh, teachers certified in math and science, which are huge shortfalls for us. And that was a picture of our, our student residents from year one, too. Kind of a double slide. Uh, year two, this is our group of uh, student residents from uh, University of Houston and Teach Houston. Uh, we got pictures from Cruz Elementary, uh, Days of Ala Middle School, Jackson Intermediate, and Pasadena High School. And there's one South Houston Trojan sitting right there in the middle as well. <laughs> and then the full picture of our student residents together in a meeting. So I asked the residents one question at that meeting. I asked them, what does being a resident teacher in Pasadena ISD mean to you? And they sent us a response. They actually did a video, if I can get it to pull up here. Bear with me. And we have three student residents here that will Hello, be talking. Hello, my name is Jamie Hernandez, and I'm a student teacher at Pasadena ISD. I am currently at Cruz Elementary in a fourth grade classroom. Being part of this opportunity has helped me grow as an educator from the professional development trainings to leading instruction across all content areas. I have, I feel like Pasadena has really helped, helped me and pushed me to prepare me for my future as an educator. Being a paid resident has helped tremendously as I was able to pull my, uh, put my full focus on student teaching 
and not only that, but it also helped elevate and enhance my experiences in the classroom, which will prepare me for my future in, as a teacher. Hi, my name is Yamalet Beltran. I am a resident at Pasadena ISD. I am currently at Cruz Elementary in second grade. So being a paid resident at Cruz Elementary has given me an opportunity to de like devote all my time and efforts into student teaching. I have been able to grow so much without having to worry about having a job after. So I devote all my time to student teaching and I've grown so much. So it's been such a great opportunity to be, uh, to be getting paid for student teaching. My name is Melanie Garcia and I'm currently a student teacher at Pasadena ISD. I am at De Zavala Middle School and I wanted to say how amazing this experience has been to develop my teaching methods as an upcoming teacher and I'm sure that all the effort that Mr. Marty has done for us is going to go beyond the classroom and into the lives of our students. So once again, thank you so much for this experience. It has been wonderful and very rewarding to share these moments with not only staff at our school, but children as well. Yeah, they've worked very hard. Then I asked the principals a question, and uh, Melissa Garza from De Zavala actually put this together for us. What has it meant to you and your school to have a resident teachers? She is proud to be a teacher and working with kids. She built close, positive relationships with all of our students. Ms. Funes comes to the classroom every day and knows her purpose is to bring out the best in all of our students so that they can meet their full potential. I appreciate the opportunity to work with an intern more than words can say. Even though Ms. Perdomo has observed and learned from me this year, I have to admit I feel I have learned a lot more from her. Over the course of the years, it's easy to forget why we become teachers. Ms. Perdomo has reminded me of those things. It's really neat to see the connection and bond that the mentor teacher and the student resident grow through a whole year. Now one of the charges that we've had through this grant is to develop uh, a team, to have a design team that will develop a uh, working design for our PISD uh, sustainable model for our own district to use for the 24-25 school year. These are the members of our district team that have been working endless hours to design a resident program that we can use for the near future. And the last, if there's any questions. So you might want to share with them what they get paid during the grant? 
Okay, so uh, the student residents get $20,000 per year to uh, work with us from day one till the end of the year. That's pretty pair, uh, close to what a paraprofessional makes. And I just want you to know what I've heard from them is it's just amazing what that amount of money has done for them to be able to focus on their career, which is uh, something that uh, really helps them grow and mentor with our mentors. So. And what we're hearing a lot from student teachers that have gone through the program at the university is they'll drop out and do alternative certification rather than going through that critical student teaching piece just because they can't afford that. So this has been a great grant, and we'd love to expand it. Absolutely. Awesome. Good job, Mike. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Yeah, I, I want to just, I talked to Mr. Richardson over the weekend about this exact thing, and a lot of the teachers or educators that are in here, when they went through that program, they didn't have any uh, any additional income, and that, that's hard on, on these teachers, but this is definitely another recruiting tool of getting these teachers to our district. So great job to you guys, great job to the grant department, wherever they roam, so thank you all so much, teamwork. Absolutely. Okay, next we're going to have a presentation. Uh, Multi-tiered system of support team spotlight and Ms. Erica Chapa, the Selexia 504 coordinator is going to yes. talk to us. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Erika Chapa. I'm the director over Section 504 Intervention and Dyslexia for our district. I have been leading our intervention efforts for the past seven years, and it's been a great ride so far. So we just want to share a little bit with you about what we do. We'll start with our team members. This is my amazing team of rock stars. Um, Stephanie Tellez is here today. She leads our intervention um, efforts in literacy, K-12. Janet Nuzzi leads mathematics interventions, K-12, and Mary McCorvey, she's not here today, but she supports our diverse learners and special education students on the gen ed side. So she makes sure that um, they get all of the supports they need as well. So these ladies have helped just pave the way for all of the amazing things that we do for our students in regards to intervention. As you guys know, we guide our work through this pyramid. Our pyramid is divided into three tiers, so tier one, this is where all of our students get access to a guaranteed and viable curriculum on grade level standards. Our hopes is that, and our goal is that 80% of our students master essential grade level standards, both on the behavior side and the academic side. But we also know that some students will need additional time and support uh, to master those grade level essential standards. So we have embedded a tier two time. So this time is carved out to ensure that those students that do actually need additional time and support are able to receive them during the school day. So across our district, elementary through high school, we have some time during the day where we are able to meet the needs of our students. Again, behavior and academic. And then our team really focuses on that bottom piece of the pyramid, the tier three. We know some of our students, unfortunately, have some missed learning opportunity gaps. And so we try to ensure that those students also, on top of getting that tier one, the additional time and support for that, also get that intensive targeted interventions that are really focused on re just remediating foundational skills. So when we say foundational skills, we're talking about foundational literacy, foundational mathematics, foundational language, writing, making sure that we're closing all of those gaps for them. So one of the efforts that we have been working on for the past three years is building a system that allows us to monitor the needs of our student and monitor the interventions that we provide for them. So this year we were able to open access district-wide to teachers and administrators to monitor those tier three efforts that we're giving our students. Um, so here you'll see our total student population and we are at about 5% of our students that receive targeted intensive supports at tier three. Those supports get monitored and we really are meeting their needs. Um, some of these students have behavior needs, some of them have academic needs, social emotional needs, and so we have a little bit over 2,600 students that are receiving those intensive and targeted interventions. Aside from that, we also have been able to ensure that students, regardless of whether they have a tier three intensive plan, if they need additional supports during STAR testing, they're able to receive those as well. So as you can see there, we have over 11,000 students receiving supports and STAR that are being monitored and provided to them. So that's a big win for our kiddos. 
So how do we make this happen? Ooh, a lot of work, you guys, <laughs> but a lot of work on the campus site as well. So four times a year we meet with our focused um, intervention assistant team chair members, and these are the administrators that come and meet with us to learn about what it takes to build a systematic intervention on on their campus, right? So they meet with us, we give them the learning piece, here's the next phase of implementation. They're able to just collaborate with their colleagues, brainstorm ideas, share ideas, take it back to their campus, and then we bring them back and spotlight them. Show us how you did it, show us what successes you guys have had. If they've had barriers, we help them address them as well. So on the admin side, we have a huge team of administrators, elementary through high school, helping us with our efforts but also 72 intervention teachers, elementary through high school, that are focusing on closing those foundational gaps for our students. So these teachers meet with us, they meet with our amazing specialists, they really do focus on foundational gaps. So they're, they now have the skills necessary to meet the needs of our students. So just super proud of the work that these teachers are doing. They are super invested in the needs of our students. Here are just some pictures for you guys. We really have worked hard from moving away from a sit and get classroom to a hands-on classroom. So you'll see it across our levels. Kids are really engaged in hands-on activities to close those gaps. So proud of our teachers and the efforts that they're doing to help students make progress. Um, another huge celebration, we know that it can't always be top down, right? And so a lot of the work that we, requires for interventions to work are grassroots efforts. And so one of the things that we did this year is we launched our very first MTSS Guiding Coalition Collaborative, where we opened it up to campus teams to join us in an eight month long learning journey um, to really think about what does it take to build a systematic intervention system on our campuses. And so we had 17 campuses join us with teams of five or more. Um, they were with us for eight months. We had approximately 100 um, collaborative, uh, co 100 colleagues that joined us in this work and so they came they learned they had tasks they had to go back to their campus implement and then show us the artifacts so that we could celebrate their work we had teachers coaches administrators counselors um, but just super excited about the work that we're seeing you know being implemented at the campus level so we are hoping to continue this next year as well and continue to build capacity within our teachers and our campus staff um, and then of course, our ultimate goal is to make our students self-directed learners. And so here's just a quick snapshot. This we took from Enriching Students, which is one of the systems that we use to monitor or to schedule our intervention efforts. I want you guys to really pay attention to that middle column created by student. This is the number of times that students self-selected, hey, I need help in this class. I need to schedule myself for more time in that class. I need to book myself into this teacher's intervention time because I know I either need additional time and additional support or I'm, on, I'm caught up, I get to go to an enrichment. And so there's thousands of times that our students at the secondary level were taking ownership of their learning. Wow. Um, our momentum is huge right now. We are super excited. We were just awarded over $291,000 to continue supporting our efforts in dyslexia and intervention. So we'll take a proactive approach with that. Super excited for that. what, what that's going to mean for our students and our teachers. And lastly, I will leave you guys with this quote. This is what drives our team. Our profession does not build widgets, nor do we measure our success in profit margins. We deal in future, the futures of our students. Every day that we get collectively better at doing the right work right, it is measured in the life of a child. One more student gains an essential academic skill or behavior that can open doors of opportunity for a lifetime. Achieving this outcome for every child takes more than proven research and good intentions. It requires taking action. So as you guys can see, we're all about taking action, but we couldn't do it with the support you guys give us to take that action. So thank you so much for all your support. Let me say something to you and your group. Yes, sir. We hear about underserved kids in our district, and we hear about this and we hear about that. But I think this shows dead proof how dedicated, how involved you are in making kids wherever they are. 100%. That's one thing Pasadena does. Absolutely. And thank you and all of your team and all your teachers that do this. 
to make kids successful no matter where they are. So important. Thank you. Well, Great job. And I want to say, you know, the numbers showing how many students yes. realize they need that extra help. You know, you know how hard that is for an adult? I know. But a child, you are teaching them a life skill. And you're teaching them to be successful. Absolutely. And I'm grateful. Thank you. Very much. We are job. too. Thank you. Thank you. You are to be Thank commended. You. It takes a lot of work and a lot of patience. It and is a labor of love. That. <laughs> you do appreciate That's it. What it is. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so it. much. I appreciate that. I have a comment. Yes, um, sir. First, you got an all star team. 100%. And. Yeah, I, I looked at that, and that is truly an all-star team. So you work with great colleagues. Yes. My question to you is, how do you identify, or how are we um, giving the support to the teachers to identify these students before they're in so the program? It comes back to our PLC efforts, right? And so that's one of the things that we pride ourselves in our district, is being true collaborative learners, collaborative colleagues. And so when we look at our PLC processes at tier one, it's identifying what our essential standards are. Once we have that, we identify what common assessments we're going to give, what does meet the standard look like, what does that mean when students start to struggle or we notice that students are not meeting what we want them to meet, we pull them for that tier two. That tier two time is on grade level support. We're not pulling them for foundational skills yet. But it's teachers going through that data cycle to say, hey, Erica's been in my group for like three or four weeks and it's not working. Let's do some screening. Let's do some diagnostic assessments that my team provides for teachers so that they can pinpoint the exact gaps and we can fill them that way. That question was right in your wheelhouse. Oh, I love man. it. I love yeah. it. I feel it. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, next is consideration um, and possible approval of optional flexible school day program, OFSDP, for community school. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Community School Teg Tegler Merge Spotlight. So first, Ms. Capra is going to present to you the impact of what y'all just approved because you do that annually. Um, and we just like to highlight or spotlight some of the successes because of what y'all are approving each year. So take it away. And then she'll oh, get right into the next one. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Powell, school board, thank you for allowing us to come up here and speak to you. Uh, every year we have the privilege of standing up here and telling you a little bit about the impact that your approval of the optional flexible school day program has on our particular campus community school. This year we are proud to show you that we have had last year the highest graduation rate ever in the 13 years that community school has been in operation with 246 graduates. And more importantly even than that, we had a 92% graduation rate from this campus that specifically addresses those students who are at the highest risk of dropping out. So we are super proud of both of those numbers and grateful that you allow us to operate under the optional flexible program. Fantastic. Uh, but I also have the privilege today of talking to you about a exciting, oops, sorry an exciting opportunity that we have been working on for the past several months. So you are all aware of um, our campus and then also of Tegler Career Center, which is well known for its outstanding record of 100% achievement on passing STAR last year, 100% graduation rates, 100% CCMR. We've been working on a collaboration between the two campuses to join them together for, um, to create a vision of, that addresses the evolving needs of students within our district. Because one thing Pasadena does a great job of is constantly assessing where the student needs are. In doing so, we would like to present to you 
a new campus as of the fall of 2022, Ignite Academy at the Tegler Complex. Ignite Academy will be a combination of the staff and concepts from Tegler Career Center and Community School, as well as looking at other areas of need within the district. Um, it's a school of choice that we're making it possible to provide innovative programs to at-risk students throughout the district. The vision of the campus is student-centered alternative, providing personalized non-traditional learning through a multi-tiered support system to meet individual student needs, address their gaps, academically, socially, and emotionally. The program itself will operate through intervention in a uh, process of reconciling the gaps in specific skill areas, restoration to reduce, improve, and close those gaps, and reintegration with the key goal of making sure that those students, after we have helped work with them, are able to transition back to their home campuses and graduate through our traditional high schools and continue that experience that they started there. There are four programs, or pillars, at Ignite Academy. We've been working on launching the first of those pillars uh, over the past couple months, and it's called Accelerate. It looks at eighth grade students who have previously failed to be promoted one or more grade levels. We are seeing an increasing number of this, increasing rate of this, with students post-COVID, especially those students who missed a year of schooling at some point. So we're working with those overage eighth graders in a dual credit model in order to make it possible for them to catch up to where they should have been in the first place. We're also addressing the needs of students in our district who uh, we know just need a smaller campus structure, which is something that Tegler has provided through the years, and we want to make sure that we don't eliminate in the process of making this combination. Those students who are in need of a small campus due to SEL needs or whose life circumstances, whether short-term or long-term, necessitate a different approach to their academics. We are also, for the first time in the district, looking very specifically at the 9th, 10th, and 11th grade students who are considered rollbacks, those students who failed in high school to achieve enough credits to be promoted to the next grade. We're going to be looking at them on a short-term intervention process of one semester to a year, and then again, working on getting them reintegrated back to their home campus and working on strategies for success so that we don't face that at the last minute of their senior year. We will also con continue to provide a program for the seniors who are at risk of not graduating. Community school will now be labeled Achieve. Uh, it's for students who significantly fail to earn enough credits to graduate with their cohort, or again, whose life circumstances necessitate a different approach. Oh, sorry, that wasn't supposed to go there. I'd like to introduce you to uh, some of the team that has been working tirelessly over the past few months to make this possible. Jason Clark. Um, assistant Principal, Randy Elliott, Assistant Principal, and Olga Sanchez, Counselor. And we thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to um, create a vision and follow through with that in building this campus. Once again, you are changing lives, you're changing futures, and we love that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Paul. you. I do have one question. Yes, ma'am. So um, I love this idea of the Aspire uh, portion. I have a lot of clients that um, do have SEL needs and, and require smaller classrooms or have social anxiety, that kind of thing. What would qualify students for this program? So the Aspire program will be for students in grade 9 through 12 at this point. And uh, it goes through a referral process from their home campus at their zoned high school where we look at what their specific needs are and how they've been addressed at the home campus and how they might be better addressed on a smaller campus. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for all you do. We have a question. Oh, a comment. Community school has been so important to our district and I'm just delighted and pleased that we're going to add and make it even more accessible to so many students. Thank you, and thank you for your support. And thank Tegler you. has done an outstanding job. No, Community kidding. School has done an outstanding job, and I think 
I can't praise them enough, who she just introduced, as well as herself. They've worked tirelessly is not the right word. I mean, they've done all of their jobs and then took on a whole new job, not only working in the district, but they went outside the district and looked at other models, and they've worked with a collaborative around the area, and they kept bringing us ideas, and I'm just, this is why I love what I do, because I say, hey, go do this, and they're like, what? <laughs> and then they come back and just blow me away. So thank you all, all of you, Absolutely. for the time and the energy you put into this. Thank you for the opportunity. So community schools is now going to be achieved. Ignite. Oh. Ignite. Oh, ignite. Ignite at the Tegra Chocolate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> well, get used to it. And you know, Dr. Powell, we have to remember when Tegler started a number of years ago with seven students. And look how far we've come in the number of graduations that we have. So. This is a great idea. Lots of evolution, so we're very, very excited. Okay, moving on. Consideration and possible approval of the subscription renewal for Brain Pop. So moved. From September 1, 2023 to August 31st, 2024, in the amount of $121,046.25 from local funds. So Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Second. Seconded by Ms. Fusilier. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of the application for a TEA missed instructional day waiver for Days of Alla Middle School. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez. Seconded Mr. Phelan. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of the application for a TEA low attendance waiver for Bondi Intermediate. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration and possible approval of the interlocal agreement with the University of Louisiana Monroe for internship and externship students. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration and possible approval of the instructional materials and technology allotment and TIG certification for the 2023-2024 school year. So moved. Motion by Mr. Phelan. Second. Seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration and possible approval for the Sam Rayburn High School Texan Battalion Army JROTC leadership team to travel to Washington, D.C. June 18th through 22nd, 2023 to compete in the Joint Leadership and Academic Bowl JLAB Championships. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Mr. Phelan. Discussion? Well, we're clearly excited. I just want to say congratulations, like all, all expenses paid trip. That's amazing. And so congratulations to these students just for making it there. So good luck. It's a fun trip. Any other discussion? Comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. I have it. Motion carries. Consideration of possible approval of the Pasadena Memorial Sidekicks. Pasadena Memorial Orchestra and South Houston Janet students to travel and perform in New York City March 7th through March 10th, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? I have a question. Are they all going as one group together or do we have? Yes, ma'am. They're going as one group, and they're shaking their head over there, our awesome directors. I think it's cool that South Houston and Memorial are pairing up. I just have one question. Who's going to watch the baby? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's and exciting. Any other questions other than baby questions? And I'll, I'll have some of those, too. But anyway... <laughs> 
No other discussion? Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration of possible approval for the Pasadena Memorial Audio Video Production students to travel to and study in Los Angeles, California, February 29th through March 3rd, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? I actually went on this trip how many years ago, Jennifer? Oh, brother. It was an absolute <laughs> treat for all of the kids, but more importantly for myself. And I think Dr. Stallings was on that trip too. We had a great time. So this is a great, great opportunity for these kids. Awesome. It is. It's and the, uh, and the uh, chaperones. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's great. And, you're like, this is how they do it. <laughs> and just how Thank small you. those sets really are. That friend set was so small. <laughs> Other discussion, questions? Thank you for that. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Student achievements. I just want to bring your attention to student achievements. Page 136 through 139, I believe. Oh, no, it goes further than that. Wait a minute. It goes to 143 in the board book. And we've got a lot of students in the district doing a lot of great things. A lot of awesome coaches, a lot of awesome role models. I'm grateful. I'm, I, I'm grateful for these kids and putting heart and soul into it. But they have to have somebody else put that heart and soul into it. And I thank every educator that touches hearts. Anyway. So, um, moving to the financial section. Consideration and possible approval of budget amendments for March 2023. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Discussion? I just want to make one comment. Mr. Pocky. I should have given this back at the beginning when we were looking at the financials. But I certainly appreciate the changes that you've made in the board book, specifically where you have the current expenses and then you've moved out to the property reimbursements. It makes it so much easier for us mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, in the past we've looked at those large figures and we've called your office to see you know what they represent and now it saves a lot of time we do appreciate it thank you yes, so much do. any other discussion hearing none all in favor signify by saying aye, aye. aye. opposed no ayes have it motion carries we're going to move to the operations section. Consideration and possible approval of a construction contract with TADCO Roofing and Waterproofing for the 2022 Bond Program Roof Replacements Package, one project in the amount of $9,162,166. One move. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez. That was you, Mr. Phelan? Yes, ma'am. And do we have um, do we have a presentation or is no? This? We just have Danny Kirk, not just. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we have Danny Kirkpatrick here, president and CEO. Stand up, so, Danny. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. And then also we're excited. Well, we're not excited. Forget my words. Uh, the hell damage at Pasadena High School will bring in some insurance money, so we might can do some future projects helping other schools as well. So this is all exciting because oh, it's part of our bond, uh, but we're thankful for your work in making our schools better. That's awesome. Thank you. Do you think you can get it done in 182 days? We feel very confident. That's awesome. Very good. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much. Other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Congratulations. Consideration of possible approval of the schematic design phase for the 2022 Bond Program New Parks Elementary School Project. So 
I'm sorry. Wait a minute. So, Presentation by GPD Group Architects. Linda, is that Michelle? Michelle? Lisa. 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 Huh? Lisa. 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 I'm sorry. It says L L Linda here. I knew that it was Lisa. <laughs> but anyway, uh, John Haskew, Director of Business Development, Jim McSherry, Project Manager, and Alfredo Sanchez, Project Coordinator. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa Michella. I'm the Director of Education at GPD Group, and we are excited to be here today to uh, present to you the schematic design for uh, the Parks Elementary School replacement. Um, we want to take a moment to there we go. thank uh, you guys, the Board of Trustees, for having us here. Um, it's, it's been a pro fun process so far, and we also want to thank the Pasadena Administration as well. And I want to give a shout out to our uh, design committee. Some of you guys are here in the audience tonight, and also special thanks to Candace Arthur, the principal. Um, these guys have been great to work with, um, very valuable in their guidance and their direction, and we look forward to continuing to work with them as we continue with the design. So pretty. Beautiful. So just to give you a little bit of history about the building, um, that picture that you see at the bottom there, that is the um, what the school looks like today. It was built in 1956 and it had about 400 students when the building opened. So this, this project has given us a couple challenges and opportunities. Um, first being that the, the school will stay on the site and oper be operational while we construct the new building on the same site. Um, so we will also you know, take into account um, as much minimal dis or as minimal disruption as possible while the construction is going on. And then as part of that, um, we're working on a pretty small site. So it's about a nine and a half acre site. Typically we see about a 14 to 15 acre site for a new elementary school. So not only are we working with an existing building, but we also have a smaller site. So um, we came with, together with the design committee and came up with some project and design goals. So um, the, the student capacity for the school is gonna be uh, 750 students. I think they're, the capacity of the school is about 600 right now, but they're not at capacity at the moment. Um, so we wanna provide a flexible, secure, and comfortable learning environment. Um, and we wanna make sure that there's minimal uh, interruptions to, uh, to the student activity during construction. And of course, we're gonna fit on an existing nine and a half acre site. Um, we want this to have a timeless appearance um, both inside and out. Uh, is a goal to have the natural light in all of the classrooms. We want to provide a safe and secure space using passive and active security measures. We want it to be warm and welcoming. Uh, we want well-defined entry points. That was really a strong item for the committee. They wanted visitors to be able to come to the campus and know where that front entry is. Uh, we want to provide ample stacking space for traffic for uh, parent drop-off and pickup that right now they're stacking up on the street. <laughs> and um, we also want to develop a theme that ties the campus together. So the theme for this, this school, uh, is Parks Elementary School, is going to be na um, National Parks. So looking at the site plan, um, there you see an aerial uh, photograph of the, of the school, of the, of the site. Parks Elementary School is right in the middle. Uh, to the north, it's bounded by St. Saint, Saint Saint Augustine Avenue. Uh, to the east is Jasmine Drive. There's a property, property to the south, and then there's Keller Middle School to the west. Um, right now, there's about 85 parking spots, um, and it's about 89,000 square feet, and there's no stormwater detentions currently on the site. Um, showing the site plan on the left, so that's what it looks like today. So like I said, Parks Elementary School is kind of right in the middle of the site, and there's parking to the north and to the west. So that really gave us only one spot to put the new school. It's going to be on the south side where the, the play area is right now. Um, we've been fortunate in that it's really kind of mostly out of the way, um, but we will have to demolish one area of the school. So that's what's seen in dark brown, that little wing that comes down um, right here um, onto the site. So that's a 2001 edition that houses the kindergarten wing right now. And actually, I think there's some hail damage to that, so it kind of worked out pretty well. Um, <laughs> but um, the site plan that you see on the right shows where the new school is going to go. And so it's long and linear um, to fit on the site, and um, we will just be building it behind in the play fields. So this is what the site plan will look like when it's everything's said and done. So you see the brown shape at the bottom, that's the new elementary school, and all the parking will be to the north of the school, um, as well as a play area here kind of in the center, and that will be off of the gym. Um, 
So we'll increase the number of parking sp spaces. There'll be about 130 in this plan, and there'll be increased stack space for cars and buses. We did add a fire loop around the building. That's per the building code. Um, we added some new sidewalks at the streets, and we, we're going to add some security fencing at certain areas around the site. Uh, we will be adding detention ponds. That's a requirement by the city. Um, we're going to preserve those big trees along St. Augustine, um, keep those on the site, and then we'll be adding some parking lot trees for the city as well. And here's the first floor plan. So one of the items, or one of the things um, that the committee, um, were, that we discussed with the committee is where do we want that front entry? And we discussed, do we want to keep it along St. Augustine? Do we mo want to move it along Jasmine Drive? So we came up with a couple schemes in both scenarios, and eventually we landed on having that front entry facing St. Augustine. So the front entry here is this uh, big orange uh, rectangle that kind of jets out of the building at the front. And then if you come in and to the left here, this, this orange area, that's the administration area. Area. And then to the right in the blue rectangles, the library, with that round area being a kiva, that kind of like a, a reading nook for the students. Um, we base the school around the pod concept. So we have pod areas for each grade level. So when you come into the building, the first will be the pre-K pod, and then we'll move to the kindergarten pod to the left, and then first grade to the left of that. And then a special ed uh, pod, this yellow area shown here on the right. Um, directly above, so there's a two-story building, and we will have um, second, third, and fourth grade directly above these pods, and that's really the only second, that's, that's it for the second floor. And I'll show that in just a minute. Um, you'll see these pink rectangular boxes here. That's music, art, and we have science down here at the bottom. And then up here in the top left, we have the cafeteria, the gym, and the stage. And so there was discussion with the committee on this as well as to where the stage should go next to the gym or the cafeteria. It eventually landed at the cafeteria. And then they wanted this, the cafeteria and the gym to be connected and, and divided by a partition um, that they can open and close so that they can open it at, if there's going to be a large event. And once again, the same pod concept on the second floor with the second being on the far right, third grade in the middle, and fourth grade on the far left. The areas that you see here that are colored aren't really um, on the second floor. They're just a two-story volume, so they show up on the second floor. Uh, here's an isometric showing a typical classroom pod. So there will be six classrooms per pod, and each classroom will have natural light. Um, so exterior windows. And in the center of those is a large uh, flex area, um, multi-purpose space uh, that uh, any of the students and teachers can use. And each pod will each have their own restrooms as well and a teacher works workroom. And here you see what the exterior is going to look like, uh, the top being a front yeah. elevation and the bottom being exterior rendering. Um, because of the building is located so far off the street, we wanted to create some large volumes so that it can be seen. So you see two large volumes. The first in the foreground here is the library and the main entry, and in the background is the gym and the cafeteria. So like we said, we wanted that front entry to be visible, so we popped it out from the building and gave it some color. So you see um, some colored panels here, these blue and green panels. That'll be um, Nichiha, which is like a cement panel. Um, and then we use that same kind of um, colored panels over in the gym area for some accents. Um, we also created a large name, um, Parks, on the on the gym so it can be seen, but we also have the full name of the school right near the front entry. Um, you'll see the sphere-looking thing. That's actually the Kiva. We made it a design element and stuck it near the front entry. So that'll be something fun for us to, to design and create. And um, pretty much, uh, we also have the large overhang and this canopy out front to give some covering to the students. Um, the materials of the school, like I said, will be the Nichiha. This brown color that you see will also be Nichiha, but it'll look like wood. And then we'll use um, brick around the rest of the building. Um, and we will also kind of bring up the, the windows off the floor a little bit in the school, so they'll be about four feet off the floor, just to give a little bit more security for the students. Uh, like you've seen in the previous uh, presentations by other architects, we have a project program. Right now, we are about 109,000 square feet. And our construction budget is just over $33.5 million, and that will include a new building, new MVP, fire safety and technology systems, new sidewalks and parking, uh, new site detention, and it will include the abatement and demolition of the existing building. 
So for the schedule, uh, we hope to be coming back to you guys in July to present design development. And then we will issue for permit and bids in November, or this November. And then um, that will begin the uh, contract for the, con the contractor. And they will start construction um, on site probably in March 2024 and they will be finished with the new building in July of 2025. Mm -hmm. um, that will allow us then to go and abate and demolish the existing building and everything will be complete in January of 2026. And with that, I just want to say thank you and open up to any discussion. Beautiful building. Thank you. Yeah. Motion. Motion by Mr. Phelan. Second. Seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Now discussion. It is beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right up to the line of parks, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yep. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you so much Thank for you. the presentation. Consideration and possible approval of a geotechnical engineering services agreement to Terracon Consultants, Inc. for the 2022 bond program, New Jessup Elementary School replacement project in the amount of $35,100. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Phelan. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of change order number 002 for the new Thompson Intermediate School replacement project in the amount of $310,000. So Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration and possible approval of allowance expenditure authorization AEA number 68 for the new Thompson Intermediate School replacement project in the amount of $84,985. Second. But motion by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? Question. Yes. Was this $84,000 a surprise, Dr. Powell? Or it was some additional requests from Pearland, the city of Pearland, that typically we don't have in other cities. I wouldn't say it was a surprise. Was it a surprise? It was unforeseen. Unforeseen. Okay. We've had some unforeseen there. I remember when we built South Belt, we had some unforeseen yeah. trees and yes. things like that. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Consideration and possible approval of allowance expenditure authorization AEA number 69 for the new Thompson Intermediate School replacement project in the amount of $121,671. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Discussion? So this is where we test the antenna to see if we have a strong enough signal for safety reasons. Yeah. And we need to add this to okay. make sure they get full coverage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. <clears throat> Consideration possible approval of allowance expenditure authorization AEA number 70 for the new Thompson Intermediate School replacement project in the amount of $107,771. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. You have the construction update. It's for information only. Anyone have any questions or want to say anything about it? Hearing none, we'll move to the miscellaneous section. Public comments according to BED Local related to topics not listed on the agenda, and there are no public comments this evening. Announce board training completion requirements for the time period covered by this announcement, May 1st, 2022 through April 30th, 2023. David Hodgins, partner at Thompson & Horton LLP, will announce the requirements. Then I will read the announcement into the record. I don't know that I can. Thank you, Madam President, board members, and members of the Pasadena ISD community. Under State Board of Education Rule, uh, completing required continuing education each year of service 
is a basic obligation and expectation of any sitting board member of the Pasadena IST board. The board president or the presiding officer are required to announce under the rule the name of each board member who one has completed the required continuing education, two has exceeded the requiring required continuing education, and three uh, is uh, whether or not they're deficient in meeting the required continuing education. The requirements for training are measured as of the first anniversary of the date of the trustee's election or appointment, or the two-year anniversary of, or of his or her previous training as applicable. There are 10 training areas that are required under the rule for board member continuing education, and they are as follows. Introduction to the Texas Education Code, which is a part of big, this big honking book that they have to review. Local district orientation, open government, child abuse prevention, sexual abuse, human trafficking, and other maltreatment of children, cybersecurity, evaluating and improving student outcomes, a post-legislative update to the Texas Education Code, school safety, team building, and then finally, any additional continuing education required by the rule. Madam President, that that closes the presentation of the requirements. Thank okay. you. Okay. I need to read this, each one of these. Okay. As board president, I hereby announce the completion of continuing education credits received by the Pasadena Independent School District Board of Trustees for the time period covered by this announcement, May 1st, 2022, through April 30th, 2023. Following information will be reflected in the minutes of this meeting. Introduction to the Texas Education Code. No new board members were required to complete introduction to the Texas Education Code training for the time period covered by this announcement. Local district orientation. No new board members were required to complete local district orientation training for the time period covered by this announcement. Open government. No new board members were required to complete open government training for the time period covered by this announcement. Child abuse prevention, sexual abuse, human trafficking, and other maltreatment of children. The following board members have completed the biennial training on child abuse prevention, sexual abuse, human trafficking, and other maltreatment of children for the time period covered by this announcement. Crystal Davila, Kenny Fernandez, Paola Gonzalez Fusilier, Marshall Kendrick, Vicki Morgan, Casey Phelan, and Nelda Sullivan. Cybersecurity. The following board members have completed the annual training on cybersecurity for the time period covered by this announcement. Crystal Davila, Kenny Fernandez, Paola Gonzalez Fusilier, Marshall Kendrick, Vicki Morgan, Casey Phelan, and Nelda Sullivan. Evaluating and improving student outcomes. The following board members have completed the biennial training on evaluating and improving student outcomes. Crystal Davila, Kenny Fernandez, Paola Gonzalez Fusilier, Marshall Kendrick, Vicki Morgan, Casey Phelan, and Nelda Sullivan. Post legislative update to the Texas Education Code. No board members were required to complete post legislative update to the Texas Education Code for the time period covered by this announcement. School safety. Following board members have completed the biennial training on school safety. Crystal Davila, Kenny Fernandez, Paola Gonzalez Fusilier, Marshall Kendrick, Vicki Morgan, Casey Phelan, and, and Nelda Sullivan. Team building. Following board members have completed the annual team building training. Crystal Davila, Kenny Fernandez, Paola Gonzalez Fusilier, Marshall Kendrick, Vicki Morgan, Casey Phelan, and Nelda Sullivan. Additional continuing education. The following board members have completed and exceeded annual additional continuing education requirements. Crystal Davila, Kenny Fernandez, Paola Gonzalez Fusilier, Marshall Kendrick, Vicki Morgan, Casey Phelan, and Nelda Sullivan. There are no training deficiencies for the time period covered by this announcement. Thank you. So all we have left is to set the date for the next regular meeting, suggested Tuesday, May 30th, 2023. So we'll, will we have cake? What? Will we have cake? I don't know. It's my birthday. Oh, yeah, we'll have cake. Okay, okay everybody. So moved. Yeah. So, second, right. third. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Fernandez, what? Seconded by Mr. Phelan. Discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Who's going to T bring the cake? Tuesday, May th just be quiet. We'll figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, May 30th is our superintendent's birthday, so we will have cake. And <laughs> there, uh, th this uh, motion carries. There's no further business to come before this board, so I declare this meeting adjourned at 9.05 p.m. <laughs>